The new challenges that the apes are facing in this movie are one of desperation to survive. I mean, they are, they are, we, we, we have left, we're two years on from the end of dawn where war is now raging and the, you, you're seeing this, they're trapped, they're, they're hemmed in by a, an army, a human army. And uh, so that they are at the point of despair and Caesar is trying to find a way out, a new, a kind of a promised land that they can escape to. This is a very different film for Caesar, um, and it's called War for the Planet of the Apes, not just because there is a war, but it's also a, a war within himself, a conflict, an internal conflict, and, and the fight for his soul, really. Um, and an event happens very early on in the movie that uh, that, that triggers uh, uh, his journey into, you know, into a personal hell that he has to, feels like he has to revenge and through that he loses his ability to empathize um, with human beings for the first time in his life. So it's a, it's a, it's a hugely different journey for Caesar in this movie and, and one that took me as an actor to a very dark place. So as with the other movies, we, we are seeing this, this evolution of a character, you know, and it's very rare that an actor does get the opportunity to play, in, as I did in Rise, a you know, an ape from infancy through teenagehood and, in, uh, and becoming a revolutionary leader, and then in the second film as this, uh, as this, as this empowered king who is setting up a society, and now we see this very war-torn. Um, uh, uh, older, older version of Caesar that's that's desperately trying to hold everyone's morale together um, in, in 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 terrible, terribly worsening situations. Um, so it's, but also he is evolving, and so linguistically he is becoming much more human-like, and physically he's becoming much more human-like. And so the challenges that were in the earlier movies, where I was being much more chimpanzee-like. Um, kind of slightly fell away and, they, and it became about getting the balance exactly right so that it never ever felt that I was uh, a, a, a human in, a, in an ape digital skin, that it felt very much rooted in, in Caesar as a character, um, the, the way he spoke, the way that he conveys his emotions, but at the same time really treading a fine line so that you, you do completely connect with his emotions. Uh, th one of the great pleasures of this movie was working with Woody, uh, who who has become a very close friend of mine throughout the, the process of making the, the, this film. Um, we both had respect, huge respect for for each other as actors, and bizarrely, Caesar and the Colonel have a strange, uh, almost respect for each other, although a deep hatred of each other. Um, it, it's a sort of the willingness for f f to 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 to, to to take, to do whatever it is necessary to keep their uh, species alive is what's at the heart of it. But at the same time, they realize that if you took these, you know, if, they, if you took both of them out of that situation, the desperation of war and the loss of empathy, and if you take them out of that situation, that actually they both are quite uh, emotional and empathetic human beings. And so it's a very, very complex and strange kind of mirror, mirror image of each other. Incredibly, uh, the character that Steve Zahn plays, uh, Bad Ape, is uh, he was so instinctive about the role. He knew exactly how he wanted to play it. He didn't want to play him as this sort of buffoon character. He wanted that character to have a lot of pathos. And, that's, and that really, you, do, you see so much of Steve in there. He's, he's an incredible human being, very, you know, he's really down to earth so unactorly and uh, you know a real you know real family man and that and and all of those qualities really sing through in his portrayal of bad ape um so it was never you know it's funny because because he's played a lot of comedic roles he still manages to bring real an immense amount of pathos and reality and truth to the character because of who he is as a human being Amaya is the is a force of nature and a brilliant and instinctive young actor who, considering she'd never really done much before, was was it was it was 
was quite awe-inspiring to work with because she has a, there's a sort of uh, just this de deep honesty about her in 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 her stillness in you know an intelligence that's there um, and she, so she didn't really need any. Um, I don't think. I mean, Matt, Matt just used to let the camera roll on her because she was because it was clear that she she knew what she was doing and that we didn't need to complicate it in in, in too many ways. So she was she was highly instinctive and a real a real. It's really great um, when you work with new energies, new forces who 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 are not tainted by years and years and years of experience, but who who come in and just and just are and be and you learn an enormous amount as a as a as an older actor. I think I'm so excited for them to see this film because it's. I do think it's one of the best of of the trilogy. Actually, I think it's so powerful emotionally. It's it's a it's a huge epic. Um, it's a, there's a mythic central journey from Caesar. Uh, there's great uh, great performances across the board from Karen Carnival as as uh, Maurice the orangutan, Terry Notary's Rocket, and Amaya Miller as 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 Nova. And Steve's aunt. They're, they're they're all they're all beautifully drawn characters. It's um, it, it it really is a kind of quite heart wrenching film, and it's beautifully balanced. So you you as an audience member connect to it, not thinking that you're rooting for apes or humans, but that you're going through this very visceral uh, emotional experience. Um, and I and I really look forward to audiences going through it.